what's up friends uh, we got another video today um, as long as you guys keep liking them I'll, uh, I'll keep putting them out um, I've gotten some pretty good feedback I've uh, gotten appropriately roasted by uh, some friends at World, World's Games tryouts uh, specifically Grant Lindsley um, but you know, I was able to show him the video of me scoring on him to win the national championship, and that seemed to quiet him down a little bit. So, love you, Grant. Thanks for subscribing. Um, I've also gotten some feedback from Mike Denardis about how much he loves that I'm sharing some of the Ring of Fire strategy, the Raleigh strategy that's helped him win the past uh, college, club, and pro national championships. Uh, he doesn't seem to love it weirdly, so uh, maybe I'll <laughs> maybe I'll take a little break from uh, breaking down some of the the Raleigh footage for now. Um, but yeah, anyways, uh, you know, oh, I've also gotten some comments about how this setup right here kind of looks like I'm in the witness protection. Uh, you know, we're working with what we got, all right. You know, until we're about 14 million subscribers shy of uh, being able to get our own studio and. Uh, getting all the the high-tech stuff going so for right now this is, this is what we're working with so I hope it's not too bad um, also heard some stuff about not being able to hear my videos I'm gonna really try to fix that this time I, I hope I hope this is the video that fixes all that stuff so uh, we'll see um, but yeah uh, I love that you guys are commenting keep telling me what keep telling me what kind of stuff you like uh, in these videos, what you don't like, what you want to see, um, you know, kind of running low on ideas of what uh, what I should be putting out there. Um, believe it or not, we are close to a thousand subscribers, which is which is honestly is pretty crazy. Uh, and there was a comment early on in one of my first videos saying I should break down the 2017 college semis game against UNC, um, which I'm sure Mike D would love would love that video. So maybe maybe he would even be the the thousand subscriber to make that happen. So. Make sure you subscribe, Mike D. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, this video is just a little trick that I use. Another just sort of like one trick that you can put into your bag um, to hopefully become a better player. So uh, hopefully, hopefully you guys like this, and uh, we'll get down to breaking the footage. See ya. All right, let's get into it. Um, in this video, I'm going to break down the art of the space throw. Um, Everyone knows sort of a big reason of what makes throwing a frisbee so unique is that it can float in the air and let the receiver run onto it. Um, and you've all probably heard the term spacer before. So in this video, I just wanted to give a couple examples of how I like to use the space throw in different game time scenarios. Um, so in this first example, we see the disc is on the flat side of the field, and if you watched my last video, I talked about sort of the best way to defend the dump on the flat side of the field. But in this case, the defender decided to face guard me, and so I'll show you how I took advantage of this. Um, once again, I'm just going to let the clip play, and then we'll go back and sort of analyze it. So here it is. All right, so we'll go back and see what we saw there. So as we said, the disc is on the flat side of the field right here, and my defender is face guarding me, which means his back is completely turned toward the thrower, so he can't really see what the thrower is doing. So the thrower right here is Justin Allen, and this is me setting in the, up in the dump right here. So first things first is me and Justin are going to make eye contact right here. Justin's going to look at me to make a move and this is just sort of signifies that Justin's ready and locked in on me at the dump. Uh, the next thing we want to see is sort of this open space right here. This is the space that ideally we would like to get the disc to. Again, we're trying to swing the disc from side to side to sort of change the attacking angle. So this is the, this is the free space right here that we're trying to get the disc eventually into once we get the swing across right here so it's important to identify all this open space all the defenders are now cleared down so there's a big space right here for the throw to go and then the next thing we want to analyze is how my defender is playing me so there's a couple different ways to face guard here 
In this scenario, I think that the defender is playing too far off of me. If you're going to face guard, I think you should be trying to press up against the offender right here. But in this case, the defender is uh, a yard or two away from me, which really already gives me the separation I'm looking for for this throw. So essentially, I see the defender is set up in this way right here, two yards off of me. And what I'm going to do right here is just put my hands on my knees pretty much tell and while I'm looking at Justin pretty much telling Justin like, hey, I'm not going to make a move here. There's no point for me to try to dance and get open because I already have this much separation from the defender. And this sort of tells Justin that, hey, I'm not going to make the move. The move is you should throw me out to this space so I can get this free swing right here. So Justin, I think, takes a second or two to sort of realize like, hey, I'm not my hands are my my hands are on my knees. I'm not going to make a cut here. So Justin then realizes, okay, because Jack's set up in that way, I know that it is my job to sort of throw this disc out into space. He makes a great throw right there, and it makes everything really easy. Um, and again, the last part we want to see right here is because we get this free swing so easily, these defenders have to be aware and have to orbit really quickly. And Goose does a great job of countering the defender's momentum and gets a lot of separation really easily. So um, that was just an example of how to take advantage of face guarding on the flat side with just a simple space pass back to the middle of the field. Um, you know, in a lot of ways, you can really work smarter and not harder with these space throws. So in this example, the disc is coming in off of a stoppage. And this is always a great opportunity to use a space throw, especially to the break side. Um, so I'll play the clip once and then we will go back. So the big thing to notice about this clip is just how much space is here to throw uh, into this break side. All the defenders are orbited to the correct side, but because everyone is standing still, the offense has a very obvious advantage to this side of the field. And because this is coming in on a stoppage, I've had enough time to sort of decide how I want to set up my throw into this space. And so I simply am just going to step through and throw and trust that my receiver will properly seal the defender and then go get the disc, which Noah does right here. And Noah does a really great job of just continuing that throw to the break side right here. Uh, to Allen, who has, again, the advantage to the break side uh, because his defender was orbited onto the open side. So just a um, really good way to utilize a stopped disc right there and utilize a defensive orbiting sort of against them if you're able to throw a nice floaty pass out there to the break side. This last example is a bit different because we're going to throw to a player who is already cutting. Um, in the last two examples, obviously, the receiver was just standing still and the thrower sort of threw them open. Um, but in this example, the receiver is going to make a move into a space. But it's just a good example to showcase, again, how a good space throw, a good touchy throw can make a receiver more open than they might appear. So first things first, again, we're going to make eye contact right here between the thrower and the receiver right here. I'm making eye contact, and I'm sort of expecting Elliot, who is the receiver right here, to make a move back to the middle of the field for an easy dump. But I believe Elliot sees Saul and his defender in this space, so Elliot's going to counter that and make a move upfield right here. So as he makes this move, um, what I first see is that this defender right here, he is again face guarding and has his back turned towards me as the thrower. And so he's not perfectly able to see where or when I release this disc. So I'm looking again, I see that Elliot has the advantage of knowing exactly where I'm gonna put this disc where the defender has really no idea. Um, the next thing that I'm going to see right here is the appropriate space that I can throw this throw into. So right now, the defender appears to sort of be ahead of Elliot in this vertical space, 
but Elliot is much more at the advantage towards the sideline right here. So again, I'm not necessarily looking at this vertical space to throw into. I'm more looking into where would Elliot win this foot race. And I do believe with Elliot being in the position he is versus a defender, he Elliot would win the space closer to the sideline right here. Um, this, this sideways space right here. So I believe if I put the disc sort of in this pink area right here, Elliot should be able to win that race, especially because he has the momentum right here. And the last thing that I want to point out is that, you know, because the Frisbee is a Frisbee, they don't always have to start in a straight or be thrown in a straight line. Um, I'm going to put a little bit of inside out touch on this so that it can sort of bend around the defender and then come find Elliot back to where he receives the disc, I think, eventually up here. So we'll look at this throw right here and we'll see that. The throw kind of bends around the defender, and Elliot is just fast enough to be able to get the disc right there, and we're able to advance the disc 20 yards up the field. All right, and that's uh, that's the video today. Um, I hope some of you found it useful, at least. Um, and the last thing I'd suggest is just sort of go out there and work on those touchy space passes. Um, I think in the video, a lot of those passes looked pretty simple, uh, but it's definitely an art to being able to put the disc out with the right velocity to the right space so that the receiver can run onto it really easily. So go out there and uh, practice your throws. And again, let me know if uh, you have any suggestions for these videos. Um, and I'm, yeah, I really love hearing what you guys have to say. So uh, until next time, thanks y'all.